After researching this footage and having a whole different mindset as to what may be out there and to what the Bible is speaking of when it's clearly pointing out that God said there is a difference between celestial and terrestrial and that all the stars are made in various glories as God created them. The first thing that came into my mind when I watched one of these objects transform was that of the Transformers. It makes one wonder why they've made these movies and in these cartoons as I will show you in the following clip an old introduction of the cartoon in which we see very plainly and clearly as we listen to the introduction of the song Transformers more than meets the eye and in the end of the animation we see what appears to be two entities fighting and then falling through down into a wormhole. metal molecularly unstable industrial uses none and then the aliens came and we made the connection it's what they're made of it's the holy grail transformium that's what we're calling it focus grouped catchy trademarked yeah this is the greatest advance in modern physics since the splitting of the atom it's programmable matter and now we've mapped its genome. Aye. Now you've mapped its genome. But now we can begin to give it instructions. This is extremely good. Watch this. Change anything into anything. Sensual almost. Don't you think? <laughs> you like music? The pill. Perhaps something a little more violent? <laughs> oh my god, you've done it. In aerospace, the military, we will own the entire robotics industry. All exploration, the oceans, space, everything. The Creator formed us on the second day, the day he made the heavens. We watched over Adam and Eve, saw their frailty and their love, and then we saw their fall, and we pitied them. We were not stoned then, but light. It was not our place to interfere, yet we chose to try and help mankind, and when we disobeyed the Creator, He punished us. We were encrusted by your world. Rock and mud shackled our fiery glow. Still, we taught mankind all we knew of creation. With our help, they rose from the dust, became great and mighty. But then they turned our gifts to violence. Since the dawn of our civilization, all, um, all the way to the, 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 the time of this breaking news, we humans believed that everything that exists up there is only what we can see with our eyes and with our optical instruments. Well, things have changed now. 
because we have established the existence of entities existing in our terrestrial environment. And these entities are completely invisible to our eyes as well as to our uh, optical instruments, but are fully visible with new instruments, therefore dramatically enlarging our conception of the perceivable universe with um, the far-reaching possibility of future development and discoveries that perhaps are beyond our imagination at this time. The Revolutionary Santilli Telescope is designed to detect antimatter in deep space. By antimatter, we mean an entity with characteristics that are the exact opposite of ordinary matter, including the index of refraction of light, which is opposite. As you can see in the diagram, we have two telescopes, the Santilli and the Galileo. Now, if you look closely, you'll see that the only real difference between the two is the lens. Notice that the Galileo uses a convex lens, whereas the Santilli telescope uses a concave lens. Now, when ordinary light passes through the uh, Galileo telescope with the convex lens, that lens focuses the light and can be recorded or the image recorded by a digital camera. Should antimatter light pass through the convex lens, it would merely be dispersed along the walls of the telescope and not be focused at all. Now, the exact opposite happens with the Santilli telescope. When antimatter light passes through the concave lens, it is then focused and provides an image that can be recorded by a digital camera. Ordinary light would be dispersed among the walls of the telescope. Galileo originally conceived and constructed his telescope for discovery in deep space. But as we all know, um, Galileo telescope is today used for all sorts of uh, terrestrial view. Our telescope had essentially the same fate because it was originally conceived for the detection of antimatter galaxy way deep into space. However, to our great surprise, we discover that our um, telescope can equally detect entities in our terrestrial environment that are completely invisible to our eyes, to our binoculars or to Galileo telescope, but they are fully visible in cameras attached to our telescope, for which reason we call them invisible terrestrial entities ITE. We have detected at least two types of ITE. The first type, also called dark ITE, essentially consists of um, entities leaving a dark image in the background of digital cameras attached to our uh, new telescope. And the second type, called bright ITE, essentially consists of entities leaving this time a bright image in the background of a um, of digital camera attached to our telescope, often visible without any enlargement. Our discoveries of in invisible terrestrial entities has been independently verified by um, American astronomers, also according to publications available in the internet. I am a scientist, formerly from MIT, Harvard, and other leading institutions around the world. As such, my duty is that of documenting the existence, quote-unquote, of those entities. The question of what those entities are must be answered by our government because those entities appear to conduct unauthorized surveillance of rather sensitive civilian, industrial, and military installations. What we have learned is that Reality is much bigger than we originally supposed. Reality consists not only of things that we can see and observe with our eyes and ordinary telescopes, but things that we can't see with our eyes and with ordinary telescopes. But the Santilli telescope allows us to see things that we have never seen before.
ебать! Блять, война Guska, July 30th, 1908. In a remote area of Siberia, the morning calm was rocked by an explosion. The powerful blast was heard a thousand miles away. There was an enormous fireball blast, something on the order of 15 megatons of equivalent energy, which is roughly a thousand times that of the Hiroshima blast at the end of the Second World War. This was an extraordinary event. Because of the remoteness of the Tunguska region, it was almost 20 years before any government researchers visited the site. The first expedition to reach Tunguska was headed by Russian mineralogist Leonid Kulik. When the, the initial expedition got to the Tunguska area in, in 1927, the natives were reluctant to show the scientists into the region because they thought the god Agdi had devastated the area because of the wickedness that was going on, and he had destroyed the trees, killed the animals. Kulik eventually convinced locals to direct him to the blast location, Believing a meteorite had caused the massive explosion, Kulik assumed he would find a crater at the point of the meteorite's impact. To his surprise, there was none. He looked for meteorite samples on the ground because often when an, an object hits the earth, uh, it throws up debris and the debris is recoverable around the edges of the crater. But of course he didn't find that either. What Kulik discovered has stirred UFO debate for decades. At the blast's epicenter was a frozen swamp with an untouched clump of fully grown trees in the middle. Circled around the grove, 10 million dead trees lay in a symmetrical ring, seemingly mowed down by a cosmic scythe. So here we have a, an enormous blast site with no crater, no fragments or meteorites around the rim of the crater, and this radial pattern of burnt trees knocked down for some 20 miles in all directions. In the years that followed, others traveled to Tunguska to study the unusual occurrence. There might have been fruits obtained by labors of another expedition sent by the head of the Soviet secret police in the late 1940s. But all we know is that such expedition existed. We do not know what has happened to the items and the information it collected. Further baffling ufologists were reports of radiation damage in the Tunguska blast region. There were also some reports of mutations taking place in plant life, and uh, even uh, some humans apparently uh, suffered some uh, gene damage. In 1947, Russian Army Colonel Alexander Kozentsev developed a remarkable theory based on information about the devastating consequences of America's atomic bomb attacks on Japan. He was listening to the report about the nuclear bombardment. The announcer gave a very long and very detailed description of how and in which direction trees, houses had fallen and so on, how everything was hit. He realized that what had happened in Hiroshima, exactly the same happened at Tunguska, only nearly half a century ago. I have been several times to the place where the Tunguska body fell. I intentionally call it body, not meteorite. I mean the catastrophe of an asteroid, of a comet or of any other natural body cannot lead to such consequences. 
A number of expeditions found things that they couldn't explain. There are some people who were saying that the evidence suggested this was some kind of an alien spaceship. Uh, that was the kind of magical explanation you use when you don't have enough surreal science to understand the physics and the, uh, and the astronomy involved. What really happened at the Tunguska event? What really came crashing down? These are the things we need to be investigating. Jesus himself told us to watch. And by understanding the true Hebrew cosmology of Earth and how the stars above are actually all created beings that God himself made and named and placed there, it is more interesting to look up in the night sky and realize what's truly up there and what is going on. Maybe chemtrails are a way of masking what goes on up above us. It's quite possible. It's definitely one of the theories. But something we need to understand is that how Hollywood works and how Satan operates is to show his story, but in a twisted sense opposite of that to what the scriptures tell us. What I firmly believe now is that the whole series of Star Wars movies and books were all done as a perverted way of showing the war in heaven an altered view of what actually happened according to the scripture with this interesting knowledge we have acquired and through reading the scriptures and getting an understanding of to what stars actually are I say we should do what the Bible tells us and watch and keep our eyes up and keep looking up as to what is going on above our heads as there is a reason NASA does not want us paying attention and wants us to believe everything that they pump out and all the lies they've taught us about what the stars are and what's above our heads it's a much safer bet to follow what was written in the scriptures as I will show in the following clip everything that Hollywood makes is a perverted or altered version of biblical events there was an actual war in heaven and there is one still currently being fought these wars will continue until the end of days as written in Revelation. Keep in mind that this following clip is just a distorted view, a satanic view of the actual wars in the heavens.